this is unloaded. I took the belt off so it's not turning the compressor. This is what the motor sounds like. And this is how easy the compressor is turning right now. But when these two are hooked together, the motor just kind of hops and skips. So I think the motor might be toast. So, my compressor motor burned out the other day. So I got another one. Happened to uh, get 20% off over at Ye Old Harbor Freight. So I bought a new 3 horsepower motor to go with the 3 horsepower Harbor Freight compressor head that I have on this thing. Uh, my wiring for it is hooked to the wall. I've already got it unplugged, but first step, I've got to unwire it from here real quick. So I assembled this compressor this way a little while before I uh, started the channel. Uh, maybe a few months. So it hasn't even been a year since I assembled it this way. A buddy of mine had this old motor laying around so he just gave it to me. Uh, I bought this Harbor Freight compressor head. Made this belt cage for it and everything. And it's on. Just a 30-gallon uh, tank that I had from an old compressor that died. I built a platform, bolted everything to it. But now, I am going to have to revisit all of that because that's the new motor. And not only is it larger, it mounts and belt tightens in an entirely different way. So, I've got to get this thing taken apart. Figure out how to mount that compressor here, or that uh, motor here, and uh, yeah, get my compressor working again so I can get back to work on the really important stuff. It was weird too, this motor never really sounded like it was having any trouble, and then uh, one time it just started freaking out, took the belt off, and compressor uh, head turns over pretty easily. Since the motor doesn't, the motor just makes a lot of scary noise and turns kind of slow. Time to replace it. So, let's get stuck into figuring this thing out. A lot of how I put this thing together was just buying parts. I didn't really build a lot. This is the original copper line for the pressure relief valve. It just goes down to a union. And this is just a regular grease gun hose. Most grease gun hoses are rated up to 3000 PSI. And I'm not putting any weird chemicals through it. It's just air plus whatever water might happen to be in it. So there's nothing that would damage the hose itself. So that's plenty strong enough to deal with 145 PSI this compressor goes up to. And then this line here is a pre-built hydraulic line for tractors and stuff. I bought that over at Tractor Supply Co. And just used a couple of adapters to retrofit it to the tank so that I could just buy prefab stuff and figure it all out. That's a half inch line so it's got plenty of capacity to move the air that's coming out of this thing. And then I just plumbed it back to the original tank fittings over here. So at this point as I looked at everything and kind of compared the two motors and looked at what I would have to change to use the stock mounting system, 
on the Harbor Freight motor, I realized I might have a better option. And that was simply to actually modify the Harbor Freight motor so that it mounted the exact same way as the old Craftsman motor that I already had on the compressor. That way, I could reuse all my existing mounting and not have to change anything further on the compressor. There could be some risk putting this much heat into the case, but right there where I put all that heat, there's not really anything underneath it. That's an open space in it, so I'm not really too worried about it. That's just like where the fan area is. Might need to be a little more careful on this back end, though. So I need four and five, five eighths outside to outside. Right now I'm basically at five inches. So if I trim a quarter of an inch off of what I've cut here, it should butt up pretty well there. generic sense of the word, yes, it's worked. Might have to get a different belt though. And all right, it looks like I do have plenty of alignment this way to make sure the pulley's in the right place. <laughs> So that wraps up how I actually installed the compressor. I do have another video showing exactly how I put this together. That one's a little more in depth because the wiring of one of these is pretty universal, but how I mounted it to my compressor is pretty specific. Maybe not to my compressor, but to any compressor that uses that kind of swing pivot type of mount system. So I actually got this thing all finished up about a month ago. I've been running it. I've been pretty happy with it. Noise isn't too bad. Seems to run just fine, it doesn't get too hot even when I'm running it pretty hard, and I've run it pretty hard a few times. So, this is where we're at now. Thanks guys, we'll catch you on the next one.